So, Polly Malinati apologized for, you know, down David Haney's uh, mental fortitude to be able to complete a fight and actually go the whole 12 without any mishap. Uh, unfortunately, like some other people, Polly was actually able, man enough to man up and admit that he was wrong and he doubted him. But also in the clip that is going to play, he gives his whole breakdown of the fight from the start to the finish. And he believes that it's hard to say that George Cambosos won a full minute of the fight, of any round of the fight. You know, and he's like, he had a 12-0. He's like, you know, based on the people who said the scores and saying that Cambosos won four rounds are fucking delusional and shouldn't be in the sport, which I personally agree. That was a total one-sided washing, but probably my Lanaji would explain in this clip. Let me get it going right now. Folks, George Cambosos against Devin Haney, and man, this thing wasn't even close. I have to be honest, I misread it. I thought it would be more competitive. Not because I didn't think Haney was the more talented guy, as you guys, if you guys watched the, the my my fight prognostications I did always think Haney was the more talented guy but I just wasn't sure how he would deal with the intensity that George Cambosos was expected to bring now George Cambosos didn't bring any intensity I gotta be honest I don't know what kind of game plan they came up with over there uh, in the Cambosos corner the Cambosos team but that was absolutely atrocious I mean I'll be I'll tell it to you like this the first minute of the fight I think he threw maybe three punches and in watching that, I watched that first minute and I said to myself, wow, this thing's not even going to be close. Because the only way you were going to make Haney feel the heat was by putting him in, an un, un, in, a, in a predicament early on to where you test his mental. And what I mean by that is you put him in a position to panic and maybe as a young fighter, he'll start to make the mistake of not using his ability, his natural uh, athleticism to box intelligently. Because at times, let's face it, uh, I, I've said it before, Haney is a guy who doesn't have a lot of power, but he's got tremendous boxing ability, but he doesn't always know how he's going into this fight. He wasn't always striking me as the kind of guy that knows what he is and what he isn't. Um, sometimes he looks to get caught up in trying to hurt guys and trying to knock guys out. And as you move up the ladder, that kind of thing can hurt you if you're, um, if you're not a big puncher. Uh, so going into the fight, of course, I'm thinking that Kim Bolsos is going to be looking to try to exploit that possibility. Because let's face it, Haney hasn't been forced into that situation yet. He hadn't fought the level of opposition that would force him into that or have to make, make force him to make that choice. But sometimes on his own, despite leading fights easily, he's made that choice himself and got himself in trouble. I mentioned the Jorge Linares fight. Uh, uh, for uh, uh, You guys may remember that. And he got himself into some trouble trying to get the stoppage, right? Trying to uh, up the tempo as far as power shots were concerned. This fight, bro, I'm telling you, this guy, he, he, you can tell he matured and learned in that Lenar, from that Lenaris experience. And this is why you fight those kind of guys that are ex-champions, a little bit ex a little bit faded, maybe a little, you know, a little bit smaller, the way uh, the way uh, uh, a lot of guys on the come up do. And you can see Haney mentally definitely is a more mature fighter because last night, yes, you can say that Ken Bolsos never really forced it the way he was supposed to, bro. That's on him. You can't blame Devin Haney for that. That's on him. You want to come out. And you, I mean, I think everybody and their mothers going into this fight would have known that George Cambosos is, the one thing George Cambosos was not to do in this fight was to try to box with Devin Haney. That's the, and that wound up being the only thing he tried to do. I don't think he really ever pushed it that much. Um, late in the fight, there were some moments in the clenches where he got a little bit rough. But to be honest, Haney fought a smart fight. Honestly, this is how I fought my whole career. I, I know I gotta re re refer to myself, but bro, speed fight on the outside. When it got too close, I would just try to hold you. That's literally the only thing my game plan every single fight. If you guys remember watching my career, it's all I did: dominate with the jab, uh, throw a combination every so often, a uh, sharp counter punching to control the guy on the outside, and then get inside and clinch. Uh, and on the inside, when the guy does penetrate, you clinch. Haney did this 
masterfully, beautifully. As a matter of fact, sometimes George got inside and, and Haney clinched, and sometimes Haney mixed it up. He, he stepped back, he kept the, the distance, and he did, had some sharp counters, or used, even used his own jab to step back and counter uh, uh, just just with that alone. Dominant f performance just with the jab. I'll be honest with you, I, I, I think Devin Haney could have won this fight just with one hand. Literally, I think if Devin Haney would not have thrown a right hand in the fight and just, uh, just decided I'm going to beat this guy with one hand, I think he would have probably still won like nine rounds. As it was, I mean, I thought he won 12 rounds to zero easily. I don't, I don't think I can give Cambosos a full minute combined in the whole fight. In the whole fight, I don't think I can give Cambosos a full minute combined, which again takes you to back to what the hell were the judges watching? I mean, there were judges that uh, gave, uh, gave Cambosos four full rounds. I mean, I don't understand where that comes from. So you clearly hear what Paulin had to say about the whole situation, and hey, I agree with him. Great performance by Devin Haney.